Greetings and uh, welcome to Cometa Radio Worldwide, CRW. The mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. Our shows are based on the principle called the idea. We inform and entertain. We develop and educate. We empower and support. We associate and network. That is the idea. Today we are hosting George Mutenda Zamera, my fellow coach, who is going to be helping us in reviewing Chapter 6, Foundational Education of my book, Holistic Career Development Coaching and Mentorship Perspective, the insights from my personal and professional development journey. We are taking it from the point where George and the moderators and anchors are extending the session to additional one hour where we look at actionable lessons from the chapter as researched by Coach George Mutenda Zamera. I am in the studio with my fellow moderator, Mai Mutuvate, and we are also joined by our co-anchors, Dade Spice Bauwa Srogoli Pole and Dade Franz Ramuda. We are, as I said, hosting Coach George Butenda Zamera to take us through. We might have missed the introductory remarks by George and uh, fellow colleagues, but the point at which we are taking it will definitely enrich your insights and take you to the level where you really would like to go deeper into the book and read it for yourself. The book is available at Amazon. You can actually access it via my uh, uh, coach, uh, I mean, Sam uh, author page, amazon.com forward slash author forward slash coach dash Sam Zima dash 2023. Enjoy the conversation. Uh, Sam is also taking his uh, uh, foundation education uh, pers- uh, uh, found experiences into his coaching and mentorship. And I quote, he says, my origin informs my perspectives in coaching and mentorship and the many traditions I experienced in life. It is unique for each of us and is declared by many creative life events. The duties and responsibility you assume, the practices imposed on you by your culture and traditions, and the things you are born into are fundamental to what you become. You will only, yeah. you will only sometimes be aware of your response and attitude to the life events that shape you. It requires much hard work, self-reflection, and intention to connect with such events emotionally in retrospect. That will trigger a certain energy level needed to function effectively as a coach and mentor. And if it is aligned with your purpose, it will benefit you and your client in your coaching and mentorship relationship. Thanks. Beautiful. George, have we answered you uh, so far? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine, Sam. Um, As I say, it's, yeah, as you rightly say, it's not so much uh, where one ends up academically. It's, it's habits and practices that you pick up, that you apply on a daily basis, wherever you are and whatever station you are in life. So it's, it's, it's that background helps you. And, and when you talk about responsibility, that's from a coaching perspective, uh, as you are coaching a client, uh, understanding the value of responsibility helps you in the coaching process. If your client is constantly pointing a finger at everyone else around them uh, in terms of of things that have gone wrong and not at themselves, then obviously the issue of responsibility comes out and must be addressed and addressed to ensure that there is progress. So when these concepts come through, if you have walked that path, 
you're able to pick it up and be able to use it for the benefit of your client. Wonderful, wonderful. I, you know, George, I, I, I was I was just uh, uh, consulting with my here that this chapter has got so much meat in it. I don't know what if you if, if we can request that we extend this conversation. Uh, I, I, is everybody uh, uh, accepting that? Maybe we take a few minutes break and then we extend it to, say, half past, uh, 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 half past uh, seven. Will, 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 you, will you be acceptable to that? Because I think we, we, we wanted to walk out with some nuggets that, that George, through his research, he has done. And he's told me that he thinks he's overprepared, but now I understand where he was coming from. You mm -hmm. agree? Yeah, no, that's yeah, I, mean, I, I wrote a lot of stuff there. I'd, I'd love to share it with. Uh, with yeah. So, so I think uh, 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 at the top of the hour, maybe we might even take a break because we are almost there. I hope the listeners are, are also uh, accepting that we, we do that. Then I suggest that maybe we take a. Uh, Five, five, five minutes break, and then we are really going to look at this in detail. And if it's if it possible, normally we used to run our shows up to up to eight o'clock. So a lot of people are are, are always uh, open to that. I, do do you agree with that? And the listeners, if you if you agree with us, we feel that we are not doing justice by all of us taking away what George was going to share with us. How is that? Yeah, uh, let's go for it. Yeah, okay. I, I'm announcing to the listeners that we take a five minutes break and then we will be back where we are going to give George to explore in detail and, and really go home with this. Yeah, all right. That's good. Um, <laughs> happy to do that. And, and listeners, it would be nice if you can give us maybe... Just that five minutes, I, I think it also gives you some time to have your drink and just run quickly because we know you are glued to it right now. So I, I hope you get your drink in that five minutes. You are able to, to, to have your uh, a nice uh, uh, um, snack, you know. Um, yes. So we're going to take it, take it to the top of the hour, eight. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, no, as I said, to him, I, I, I put quite a bit of stuff down. It'll be great just for us to share it. And, uh, yeah, beautiful. Let's take that five minutes break. We'll be back. All right. Thank you. Do, we, do I hang up right now? Yeah, you hang up. Okay. Thank you. We extend it this way. Um, yeah, so I'm glad that uh, listeners stayed with us. Uh, 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 we are continue. We're going to give you a lot of time now to really take us through your your review and, and also engage with you when you are done. Over to you, George. Um, just, oh. just, just take it from where you left it. And we will join you when you have exhausted all your reviews. <laughs> all right. So I'm not too sure where I left off, but let me talk about the next book about historical perspective, because I broke it down that way. You talk about your historical perspective in terms of it's important to know your past to inform you of your future. And that's, that's, that's such a powerful lesson for anybody. So to understand where you're going, you must know where you came from. 
Why is that important? It informs you of the thing, the beliefs that can help you and the beliefs that can hold you back. Understanding that, so if I'm a coach and I'm hearing you talk about where you came from and where you want to go and expressing certain doubts, it, I get to ask myself, what are the limiting beliefs that the individual has by virtue of his background? So what I mean by that is that with all of us, we have a certain attitude towards, say, family, towards yeah. relationships. George, towards... just hold it there. I'm told that you are cutting. I'm not sure whether... Uh, oh. it, yeah, but but I hear you very well. But I got a message that you are cutting. I'm just asking Michael to verify that once again. But carry on. We'll sort it out in the background. All right. Okay. Maybe let me speak a bit slower. Then. <laughs> um, and I was saying that each of us has relationships with the, uh, our paradigm creates an attitude towards relationships, towards money, towards work, towards teamwork. And understanding your background helps you then determine how or how to rectify problems should they arise. So, for instance, as I say, if I'm a coach and I'm coaching uh, an individual and I am hearing limiting beliefs or I'm hearing certain attitudes towards, say, family, I am going to be asking a little bit more to find out the history and why then that attitude exists. Because attitudes exist by virtue of our experiences. And so the point you raise there is, is you could actually uh, miss the point that actually it's much more than just understanding. It's, it's knowing that it has an impact in the future. So that's, that's on the historical perspective. But another point that came through, which across Africa really would be, would be relevant, was the fact that the, the government didn't have money for black communities to build their own school, uh, to, to, to sponsor. The government didn't want to sponsor. And the black communities had to make a plan to, mm. to build this. Now, at first blush, when you look at that, you're saying, oh, that's evil. That's what's wrong. Yes, it was. But when you look at it closely, it actually built capacity within the communities to build those classroom blocks, to build those schools. But not only that, because once you come together on a project, now it's no longer limited to just doing the schools. It's a capacity that you have developed. And now you can use that capacity for everything else around you. And I might be, I'll be interested in finding out that apart from building the schools, did this capacity translate into other activities where the community got together to create? But I want to drill on this point and say that now, as a coach, if I'm, re I'm reading the book as a coach, it informs me that whenever I'm getting a client who is saying to me, oh, but that's the end, you know, uh, I can't do anything else, uh, you know, my background or your background, as Sam, says, ah, actually, you can make a plan. You can make an alternative. So my questioning to my client will be, how can you make this happen? other than the government helping you? How can you achieve the same objective without the obvious resources that you see? Because as a coach, our role is to pull out from you the answers to the, to the, to the problems that you have. And so when you touch on building school, my mind is resting to a capacity as opposed to the actual structures. Because then it says, anytime you have an obstacle, if you put your minds together 
you will create a solution. Mm-hmm. And so that for me was very powerful. And as I say, yeah, it sounds negative. Yeah, well, it's negative. You know, they don't give us money. But it created something that you value as people. And then uh, you make a point that says uh, that we should go beyond classroom-based intervention and bring our physical activities into play. That's, that's, that's such a powerful point because we think our children are the ones who should do that. But we actually understand that it works for children. Why don't we as adults do it? You are with me. The point I'm getting there is that when you develop that, when we all sit and say extramural activities are good for the child, why develop his cognitive skills, develop Mm -hmm. his ability to teamwork, develops this and that and that. Actually, for us as grown-ups, even if my extramural activity is just walking around the park, it also is beneficial. So we, we shouldn't remove it from an adult world and say it's just for children. Mm. Because as a coach, now if I'm coaching you, I'm expecting you to bring this up with your children, but to take exactly the same lesson. Because if it adds value to the child, it's going to add value to you as well. And and, and if you do it with the children, they, they will be motivated, right? Absolutely. In fact, at that age, uh, they, they, they're sponges, right, kids? Uh, their heroes are you. Mm. And in fact, as you coach, you realize that if you don't create a bond with your child at that early age, if you walk back to your child at 22, there's no relationship. But biologically, you're the parent, but you don't have a bond. And bonds come from that mixed or mirror activity. Mm. Playing together, doing things, that's how you create those relationships. So if mm. I'm a parent, I'm going to ensure that ask, what are you doing with the kid after school? What activity, how are you creating a bond between you and them? So that becomes, the relationship becomes much more than just biological. You know, a lot of my friends, they go, they go play golf Friday, they don't see their kids, etc. I don't want to judge, but the point I'm getting at, if you intend on with the day your child turns 21, and you're having dinner with them. If you want to have a conversation, you better be, start bonding with them when they're four or five years old and creating experiences that then create an opportunity for you to be able to talk through that and they to listen to. Otherwise, you're just a provider of money and a biological uh, parent. Only day I want my colleagues to reflect on that one second each. The depot only. Yeah, he, he, he's so right. That's another perspective, eh? That is very, 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 very true. We we, we have always seen sort of the children getting educated by doing certain things rather than doing that with them. Uh, I, I remember in Mribane, where you come from, Sam, the, the whole question of plowing the field together uh, it was one of the things that actually brought the bond between the family members or the or the men and the boys. Is a reality man or a Exactly. And, uh, 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 and uh, even from there, where we are, we are going to, 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 to harvest the, 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 doing the harvesting together, loading it together, working together, uh, and so on and so on. And uh, that's a very powerful thing that George has actually raised in this thing. And uh, I'm glad he, he detected that. And, and w- one of the things you are saying, Sam, is um, you believe you need to leave something for these children. Mm. That's the legacy that you want to leave for them, that they should actually know. About. But at the same time, you are very much aware that you are doing something yourself for them. Yeah. Let me just explain for those who don't understand Spady what I had just said. I actually ended up talking to you in Spady, say, or or, or whatever. That is really what the people call Latin, you know, uh, I think working together collectively, that's what 
Muda uh, is. So just for those who didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to reflect on that and that there are Muta and before we go back to George and, and that they may email? Yes, I want to reflect on the issue of uh, people expecting everything from the government, uh, whereas our parents earlier on, they were self-reliant, they had the capacity to build the schools. Nowadays, Brad uh, George, uh, people don't have the capacity to be self-reliant because this is uh, uh, something that uh, the government inculcated into us. If I'm to give an example, the government is giving us different social grants and uh, then it becomes a consumption. It is not an investment because uh, instead of giving us grants, the government should uh, the government should be uh, putting that money together and create a fund that will make uh, opportunities, create jobs for opportunities. Mm. For example, uh, as we speak now, the malls uh, in the townships are owned by the investors and the communities don't have anything, they, they don't have shares in those malls. So if uh, instead of uh, us getting the grants and then consuming them and going back to get the grants, uh, the government should be helping us to build self-reliance. Mm. Yeah, the second point. thing that I want to comment on, it, it, I want to, to help me and, and the community at large. Uh, because uh, once our... Once our children turn 21, uh, Brad George, we, we have lost them. And uh, my observation is that if you lose them from the stage where uh, you're supposed to help them to go to school, to go to the church, to be able to learn uh, the, the morals, the respect, uh, so that you have something to discuss with them as they grow up. If you don't do that, uh, you you have you will miss them up to age twenty one, and therefore mm -hmm. to you as a form of a question as to how can we bring these children close to us so that by twenty one we have a a strong bond with them. Thank you. Over to you, George. Uh, okay. I can just make a comment there. Um, I think it was Sam I told you about the concept that we, we always talk about, the concept of DINA 21. Uh, and basically what the concept says is that when you have a child, imagine yourself sitting with him when he turns 21, the day he turns 21, and you're having dinner with him. What mm. person do you want to see sitting across from you? Mm. That person you want to see is someone you must develop to be that. Yes. Wow. Yes. Mouth that powerful. Is not, it's not a, it's, they don't going to come from heaven and be what you want to see. You yes. are going to train that child to be what you want to see. And once you take that responsibility, then it focuses you away from activities that take you from achieving that goal. Wow. Whatever it is. I don't know how, I don't know your community, whatever it is, it is, but Put that in your head and say, I've got a child here who's two years old. If I had dinner with him at 21, what do I want to see? Then create that. Beautiful. My Mela wants to comment and then I will let you continue, George. Uh, you, 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 you know, George, you, you, touched, you touched on a subject that, you know, uh, is very close to my heart. When you talk about the responsibilities of a father to a child. You know, I've always complained that, you know, um, there's this new culture, subculture, that people on, you know, most black men on weekend, they drive all the way from their suburbs and then they go to the townships. You know, Saturday, first thing in the morning, they go to the townships. They've got this uh, uh, chisanyama and, and, and they drink. And so they, they don't have time with, the, with, 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 with their children. And, and, that is something that is very close to my heart that I don't know how we can kind of 
pass the message, but I like that you touched on that. And the other thing that I want uh, uh, that, that I want to reflect on, which is also from your perspective, um, when you talk about um, you know um, children that you 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 need to engage them with, with, with in extramurals and do that with them, because you know the other thing that I have noticed is that you know as a parent, your child learns a lot from you. The, most of what the children learn from parents is not what they are taught by their parents, mm. but it's it's from what they see, yeah. you know. So your behavior is also more, very important in raising children, your behavior in front of them. So what you want to see uh, uh, when you're having dinner with your 21-year-old, I think you are going to see what you have been the ref- that will be the reflection of what he that child has seen growing up and 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 the other thing it's you know most people believe in buying children gadgets you know it's it's like you know our affection with our children is based on material you know and and i like that you also mentioned exp- uh, 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 having experiences with children because that is very important. You know, you buy a child today, you can buy them the latest gadget. They will forget it in, 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 a, in a few months. But experience, they will never forget. Thank you, George, for bringing that up. Brilliant. Brilliant. Over to you, George. Take us through some other points. Great yes, points yes, that you're raising there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we talked about children. You mentioned in the book that they are helpless. And uh, you make a statement that a lot of good or bad can be brought onto them uh, and determine the future that may or may not be ideal. So we've talked about paradigms and uh, the dinner at 21, as I say, I like, to, I like to use that as a concept. And, and I take from the book that you were actually very fortunate in the sense that uh, you, you, you grew up under responsible elders, grandparents, guardians, and villages. And what that does obviously from a coaching perspective is you understand the value of mentorship mm. and and mentorship is, is 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 huge because unlike coaching where you live you're trying to pull out things from an individual with mentorship it's you are saying this is the road that i have walked these are the experiences that i have had they may help you indeed this and that and of course the mentee with the option to choose and select the best fit but that's george, it. george you have just asked answered uh, a very common question that i get why didn't you just choose to write about mentorship or why didn't you just choose to write about the coach and 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 you are addressing it there uh, it was going to be very difficult because uh, sometimes I want to challenge people through my story in the book. That's coaching, right? And sometimes I just like to tell people that I became what I became because certain people were hand holding me, my hand, my teachers and my, my grandparents, but they were not calling it mentoring. So the two, one has to use them very intentionally. If, if, you, if you want people to think deeper about themselves through your story, you don't tell them, you just share with them your challenges, you just share with them your failures and your successes. And that is where in coaching, George, you call it using yourself as a tool to coach. Right. But, but as you said, sometimes you just tell them the struggles you went through and how you were helped by elders, by teachers and other people to go past them. So in other ways, you are saying that those are two avenues you can use. And that really dis- describes the difference between coaching and mentoring. And I end up by saying, George, maybe you want to touch on that a little bit just for the benefit of other people. When do you use mentoring and when do you use coaching? What's the difference between the two? Because we have to hammer on this because of the confusion out there. Thank you, yeah. George. Thank you, Sam. Um, so coaching, uh, I like to use it by way of a story. Is, is when I am coaching an executive who says, you know, I want to be the CEO of this organization, I ask questions 
that helps him to find solutions to the pathway that he has created. So he creates goals for himself. He creates milestones and landmarks around the way. If I get to there, I will move to there, and I'll be asking him questions. As a mentor, I'm uh, an old grizzly man (laughs) who has had experiences. And he is sitting with the mentor and saying, so how did you get past these challenges? Oh, I enlisted the help of this one. I did this, I this. You may want to try that. You know? So with the one, I am in a way directing, which is the mentoring. With the coaching, I'm asking you to come up with your own solutions because I know they are there, the solutions. It's just asking, I need to ask the right questions and I'll mm-hmm. pull out answers from you. So a good coach mm-hmm. will get you to answer yourself. Wow. Bauba, uh, your experience. I, I go along with that, but the the intensity of the explanation tonight is something else. George has hit the nail on the head about the the the, 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 the line between coaching and mentoring. Mm. Uh, in, in, in my experience, uh, I, I've done more mentoring than coaching, and uh, but uh, from the discussion that we're having, and of course, uh, from all my experiences as well, um, where I expe- expected to do coaching, George has actually intensified the whole attitude towards what we should be doing in coaching. Hmm. Beautiful. And Tadara Mutla, as George answered your question, what can we do for our children uh, so that at 21, uh, I can't remember what you said, uh, and you said 21 is too late. So George has answered you, uh, I hope. Yes, he, he, he answered uh, very, very well. Uh, the, the question I, I asked uh, through my presentation was, um, he indicated that uh, communities were doing things by themselves. I wanted him to draw the parallel analysis between the past and the current situation. Mm. George? Mm, okay. I'm not too averse with the current. From the book, and really from my own experience, this aligns with where I come from, that because the government never didn't really bother with the black guys, uh, you had to make a plan. And so communities came together and, and, and contributed and built something. Now, it's... Uh, it's a different environment, I, and I'm not too sure in terms of uh, the capacity that is within the communities because it's not just a wish. It's, there must be a capacity. There must be leaders who, who really stand up and say, I am going to lead this community to raise funds for the school. I am going to, so Sam's grandparent was part of the school committee. And so those are people who put their hand up and took responsibility. Today, I'm not too sure what the scenario is, but the ideal is to have people within those communities put their hand up and say, I'll take responsibility. I will go and do this. And as they do that, the people who follow will be inspired. And and obviously, if I'm watching as as, as, as a coach, I'm using that as an example to encourage and inspire people. Mm. I don't know if that's... Mm. And, and I, I want to believe, George, that... The... Again, we are not trying to bring those structures of them, but we are saying that they are behaviors that yes. you can pick up from them that you can apply today. Today, you're probably not applying it to a village community committee, but you're applying it maybe to a local government or a local structure of some sort. Yes, 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 yes. You know, Josh, the other thing that uh, I pick up here from what you're saying, um, it, it is true that, you know, we we, we, we don't need, we, we might not be doing the same thing as it was done in the villages, like Prasem says, 
But uh, I like what you just said, that we, we need to kind of be part of the solution than be people that complain. And in my view, I think that it can even start small. Because you mentioned building a school. Why can't we build a, build a school? I think it can even start small by just making sure that uh, the school premises it's well taken mm. care of. The school premises, it's, it's, it's the responsibility of the community with, around that school to make sure that there's no vandalism in, the, in that school. Because we have had a lot of stories where uh, uh, schools have been vandalized. And, 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 you know, I believe that when you say one has to raise his hand, you, you know, that, that's a very powerful statement that it can start with one person and go forward you know if 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 george raises his hand and i see him doing it i, I might join george and and somebody might want to join my and and you know it can be a chain and and the right. projects could be many uh, anyway george you you are raising quite fundamental issues there and i think uh, linking it to then uh, you are actually picking up the behaviors yeah, we, we don't want to, to, to take a lot out of you. Uh, you have more points <laughs> yeah. for leading us into this conversation. We love it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, so, so we talk about the children and we talk about raising your hand in communities, etc. There's, there's an interesting sermon I listened to, uh, one of them. I want to tie it to your book. And it had a title that says, do you want what it comes with? Do you want what it comes with? What that essentially was saying was, if you want children, if you want schools, if you want to be the leader of a community, if you want to lead your company, if you want whatever you want, they will be within that aspects that you don't want. Let's talk about the children. You tell, oh, these guys are going over to the weekend and spending their time getting there. Having children succeed at 21, what it comes with is a sacrifice that you're not going to go and have a beer every Saturday. What it comes with is that now you're going to have to spend time with that child. Being a CEO, what it comes with is that now you're going to spend time studying. Now you're going to have to understand your people better. Building classrooms, that means you go to mobilize communities. So the ideal that we want is great, but what does it come with? So it's a marriage, you want a beautiful spouse, you want somebody who works, but what does it come with? Well, it comes with the paradigm that they have about certain issues, which require you to be tolerant towards those as you work towards uh, creating a strong relationship. But it comes with something. Mm. And do you want that? Because to achieve greatness, there is pain. And so what Sam is talking about, if you look, read that, part, basically what he's saying is that there was a lot of pain. Walking down long distances, having to work, applying for bursaries, all that is pain. Mm. Mm. What does it come with? At the end of the day, Sam sits where he is now. But it came with pain. And so as you coach individuals, an individual is saying to you, oh, I just want all these things, but actually I don't want the pain associated with it. Then you now need to sit down as a coach to say, hey, hey now, now, now let's walk through this properly. Why do you think so? How? And your questions must then lead the individual to understand that this pain is part of the process of growth and achieving the goals that I want. And then, George, uh, one, one way of looking at it, if you're coaching somebody and they're struggling with what they are confronted with, mm. you could just go back into their perspective and say, but you've done things before. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, 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 and the other thing is, you know, sometimes people don't test their endurance. You know, it, 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 it might be that it's, it's painful at the time, but... If you, you, you know, I was talking to my son the other day that he is he, nine years old. And I was saying to him, you know, sometimes you have to practice endurance. You, you mm -hmm. have to say, yes, I know this is hard, but I've got to do it. Mm 
And he understood it so quickly that he said, oh, it's like when I have to go to school in the morning because <laughs> I know that the sleep is so nice. But, you know, once I hear my alarm, the sleep is very nice, but I know I have to. So I just forced myself to wake up every day. And I said, yes, that's that's the way to go. You know, sometimes people need to be shown that, you know, you need to push yourself. And 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 I'm not a coach, but I hear what you're saying, George, and I like it. Beautiful, uh, 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 From your era, you you like talking about the journey come to Joker. Tell me, <laughs> what did you have to enjoy? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, colleagues, this this is a mouthful. Um, uh, it actually triggers a number of concerns within me now, and because I'm also learning at my age from what we are discussing here. And the concern I have is, do our children, the youth of today, thinking about building a school? I'm just using that as an example, that they mm. are actually responsible uh, uh, and accountable to do certain things and achieve them. Uh, and, and, and that's what I think most of our coaching should actually come into it. That guys, nothing comes free. You got to sweat for it. In our days, we used to walk 10 kilometers winter barefooted to go to school. And when we get there, there wouldn't be any fire or any hot water to warm your feet. But at the end of the year, we wanted to pass in first class. Mm. There's a sacrifice that George is talking about. Mm, mm. Exactly. Now, and what and I'm saying very interesting uh, is to hear from Dadera Mutla. We did those sacrifices. What are the sacrifices that you think today's youth are not realizing that they have to make? Because may, maybe they will not uh, uh, walk into school barefoot. It just doesn't make sense to them. But what do you think are the sacrifices that we should be highlighting to them that they should be taking themselves up. And maybe you, George, as as, as, as Ramuta finishes, you can also hook it up and take further as further to the next points. That Ramuta. Before I say that, I want to confirm that uh, I also went through the pain of going to school barefooted. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I had to pass a, a place where uh, the youth would sit there and take our money and take our carry money uh, to go on. And I've got a scar on my on my foot because when I ran away, then I went through a thing. Yeah. So, yeah, that thing, uh, that, that thing uh, reminds me of the pain that I went through at the primary school. Mm. So what I want to advise the, the youth of today, I am at pain when I see them every Friday going to the gig, every Saturday, every Sunday. I wish that uh, they could uh, join uh, different youth clubs so that they could be able to learn uh, survival skills. They could be able to. Uh, they could be able to to learn morals and uh, they could be able to to learn how they could be able to to take forward maybe their their studies to take uh, forward mm. studies well, uh, what must they sacrifice in that ramut you know they must sacrifice going to the gigs and go oh. do uh, certain things that will help them Nices. They must sacrifice nices. Nice yes. nices. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, um, that Ramuta, I, 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 I might disagree with you on the sacrifice because, you know, I believe that, you know, every, every, every generation has its own subculture. And if you look at that subculture of geeks and having fun, it has always been there. Uh, uh, the thing that I think the youth need to sacrifice today, I think it's time, time management, which, yeah. which, 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 which is very important that you should be able to know 
what comes first and, 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 and what comes second. I mean, geeks fun, it should be taken as leisure rather than taken as, you know, uh, 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 you, you know, something that should be uh, 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 proud of or, or something that should be absolute. It, yeah. it, it, it's not. And, and, and this is where most of the youth today get it wrong. You know, I always say, um, you know, I, I, I had uh, uh, a, a nephew that, that, that liked going out and all that, and he was not serious about his school. His school. And, and I, say, I said to him, you know, if you knew that today's, uh, tomorrow's fun is better than today's, mm-hmm. because, you know, I don't care how, how, fu- how, how, how much fun you're having today. If you can spare some time to make your life better, you'd not have to take a taxi to go and have fun. You'll be able to drive yourself to that places of fun. That's why I'm saying the fun of today, the, the fun of tomorrow is better than the fun of today. So, so, so George, uh, uh, you as a coach there and everybody else as a mentor, it looks like uh, in mentoring the youth of today, we need to understand their context, as, as Mai is now sharing with us. Bring our tools that we used or learned in the past, but mentor and, and guide them in their context. I hear him say, if you want to frustrate them, stop them from going and join their friends. But maybe mentor them to prioritize and, 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 and light, enlighten them about what could be the consequences if fun become absolute. And, and, and non-negotiable thing. George? Okay, two things. The first one, that particular point, uh, on page 122, you, you make a good statement. You say we meet them right where they are and partner with them on their journey to the future. And that speaks to ICF core competencies of creating trust, et cetera, et cetera. And so in, in coaching terms and in real life, the, you must meet them where they are. If, if, if you're going to be dictating, say, do this, do that, that, then you lost that. But if you go to where they are and get to under, get them to understand, because coaching and mentoring, you can pull things out of the kids. They're not brainless, but it's, it's the way you talk to them. So meet them where they are is good advice that you share here on page 122. But I'm seeing the time, but I wanted one point that I don't want to lose uh, in this whole conversation. And I'm going to read three things that you say. You say the first part says these activities contributed immensely to our confidence building. And then you also say displaying our efforts at shows attended by our parents was another confidence booster. And then on the next page, you say it built and restored my self-confidence. My identity and uniqueness were boosted and expressed in this way. Why am I harping on about that? Because there's a saying we use in in, in coaching. You can't outperform your self-image. And I want to say that again. You can't outperform your self-image. You can't perform better than who you think you are. Mm. But if you, you, your child from five, four, three, and ten years old, you affirm them to believe that they are special, to believe that they are worthy of something, to believe that they are unique as God created them. You build in them confidence, which then translate into how far they go in life. Because if a child believes that they are no good, they can't do this, they can't do that, they have no ambition, therefore, to explode and become a world beater. But so you are, you, are, you are basically saying that reprimand in such a way that they will still be confident and not yes. feel useless. Yes, yes. That, that's a very good point, uh, uh, George. And, mm-hmm. and just to chip in there, you said a very... Uh, uh, important thing as well that uh, you know the way we talk to them you know I usually say that you know the youth doesn't want us adults to talk to them they want us to talk with them 
you know, I find that to be something that is very important when when we kind of doing this mentoring. We, with, we, we need to be talking with them rather than talking to them because that, that makes them want to argue with you. They, 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 they want to kind of counter what you say. Hmm. I, I don't know if you, you agree with me there, George. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 cover your next point as well. I think you mentioned that you have two points. On you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was going to say that it, 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 it's a natural reaction for anybody. If you attack me, I'm going to be defensive. So it's hmm. not just shooting hmm. It's mm. the way we relate. So even mm. at the workplace, you come to your colleague and say, why didn't you do that? They're going to be defensive. Mm. So mm. you want to understand your, your child and mm. say, what makes them tick? What are his strengths? What are his weaknesses? How do I approach a conversation with those guys? The yeah. moment it's antagonistic, you, you shut the door and nobody's listening to anybody else. And so uh, it's understanding it with your spouse is the same thing. If you're going yes. to yes. attack them, then the door is closed. But if you understand them and you want to encourage conversation for a bigger picture, then obviously then there's no room for anger <laughs> and all yeah. that. So, And that's a story for another day. But that's an important point to say, as a coach, what language are you using to elicit from your coach, from your client? The most mm -hmm. valuable insights. Beautiful. How are you coming across to them? And George, a... I, 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 I know you have a lot to cover. I'm going to ask you and everyone else to, using the guidelines at the end of the chapter, to sum it up. And if yes. there's anything that you have missed, you'll have to include it in your checking out using the coaching language. Right. Um, I, I've got, I've got and, that. And, and just before you do that, I see uh, uh, call, uh, uh, Coach Truma uh, um, uh, posted something and he says, I always say, let's engage. Mm -hmm. I'm yes, just uh, commenting on a, uh, our colleague there. Yeah, George, take it from there uh, and, and, and sum it up for us using those guidelines at the end of the chapter, ah, confirmations perfect. and everything else. And then I'll ask everybody else to do the same because I don't want us to cut people off because of time. Perfect. Perfect, sir. So starting with confirmations. So it confirmed for me the issue around perspectives being paradigms and uh, how we are a product of our values, our beliefs, our attitudes, our habits, the environment we grew in. That's who we are. And But here's something. We are not helpless to the environment we grew up in, to the bad habits that we may have picked up. We can unlearn them. And that's a point that you, you bring out in your in your point, in your in your book, so that's that's confirmations. What is the aha moment? It it is embracing the conflict between the school and the, and, and and the heading of cattle. A well known African leader, uh, who I won't mention today, says in his statement that he would sit underneath the tree, read a book at the same time, keeping an eye on 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 his cattle. And so that experience is not just you as Sam. It's many African leaders, even presidents, who had that same experience. It's worthwhile to remember it uh, as you share that experience with your, with your children. That's an aha moment for me. New insights is really just as a, a better picture of Sam because there's some things in there that I didn't <laughs> know. So I'm kind of like, mm, all right, now I know where this comes from. And, and really summing up as triumph of adversity. You know, you, you, when you go through adversity, you are sharpened. I think uh, you, 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 they call it sharpening the soul. The more adversity you get, the more you overcome, the better person you become. My take home is, is really, if I'm coaching somebody, your future is in your hands, irrespective of your background. It doesn't matter where you came from. You have the capacity within you to become better. And don't hide behind a challenging background. Oh, I didn't have this. I didn't have shoes. All of us didn't have shoes. I, 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 there are very few leaders I can speak to who will claim that they walked to school with nice shoes and all. I didn't. But w without shoes, we are where we are today. And so you are not that much of a victim. Yes, there are things that were wrong, but you can come out of this. So remove the shackles yourself in your mind because that's where it starts. If you say in your mind, I can, you will be able to. And then uh, 
yeah. and then new behaviors. Obviously, uh, from this, it's digging deeper every time I have a conversation with the client. Let's let's find out where where you come from. What are the things that strike you? What was traumatic? What and because it's those traumatic things. I was going to tell you a story that traumatized me, which impacts me today. But I won't, we don't have time for that. But those are my takeaways. Beautiful, beautiful. Dadera Mutla, over to you, uh, my brother. Thank you very much. Uh, my confirmation, uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's on page 105. Tua Tua Itua Mudisha Ocho Mutua Naisha King. Brasame has shown a, a good uh, example of a person who thrived through uh, the foundation phase that led him to be a seasoned uh, coach and mentor. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the other moment, uh, actually, as George was uh, introducing the subject, uh, he talked about the issues of the paradigm. Uh, he talked about the issues of the, the issues that the, the philosophies that informed uh, um, the the perspective, and then uh, the new insights that uh, I got here is that um, the vocational uh, foundational education um, is the key to success uh, for. The, for the years to come. And then uh, the take home, uh, obviously what I'm taking home here is that as we go forward, uh, participating in our communities, uh, the, the foundational uh, phase is a very important uh, phase in the upbringing of the child. I think the new behaviors and practices uh, as we go through uh, the foundation phase, we should be able to uh, reflect as to where we are coming from, in particular as an input into coaching and mentoring. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks, Dr. Mutla. Let's go to Paul. Dr. Paul, uh, Thank you for, for, for this good discussion tonight. And uh, once more, thanks for Sam for writing this book. And uh, I really honor the the intention that you have about saying, I want to share what I've learned with the young people. I want to be their friends so that they can also learn from me. The, the whole question of coaching, mentoring, uh, particularly for the youth, is so critical. And I think it's a challenge. We should be like those old people who build schools and build our communities by building our children. Um, that is a challenge that is now in me. I think we need to do more. Mm. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. That my, 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 my. Yes, um, you know, for me, um, I'll start with perspective. That y y you know, um, I've seen the difference from what I was as a youngster and to what Mr. Sam Tima was as a youngster. Um, you know, there's so much difference that. <laughs> I was never, I was never a head boy, but I was a child at some point that has to go to school without shoes. Though, even though I was in in the township, but I've also gone through that. The other aspect uh, on the aha moment, um, I like the fact from the book what I hear is that Brasem took a responsibility upon himself. To, to, to go through all the hurdles that, that he was facing. And he, he, he overcame them. And um, on, on, my take home would be 
the parents that allowed him that space to also be able to think for himself, irrespective of the education that he was getting from school. Because quite frankly, we, we, we know that Bant education has taught us, was teaching us not to think for ourselves. Bant education on itself, it was not an education that, that gives a black child some kind of uh, uh, um, uh, that, that aspect of being able to think for themselves. Hence, even what we are getting is not what the white children were getting. In, uh, you know, the, even in science, we we all had to do to deal with a low caste. But what do they tell us about the low caste? What do they tell white children? So that, that's my take home, and 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 I'm very very uh, 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 glad that I, I I read the book, and 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 for me it changed everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, George, let's give you one two minutes to just tell the people how they connect with you. Just one more, uh, 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 just one minute to two minutes, please. Yeah, I think the easiest is go on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. Again, the name is George Mutenda Zambera, and uh, you will see me there. And of course, you can get a hold of Comenta. Uh, they, they they will give you even my phone number. Yeah. Yeah, now George is our associate uh, executive coach that is with us in the field. And by the way, you did participate in our digital online DJ development program. So no wonder we didn't have to go through so much checking in and all things. You know the the, the stories. Thank you so much, George. Uh, uh, it's been wonderful. Um, I want to spend some the remaining minutes just letting people know what is coming next. Uh, and again, I want to thank you, colleagues. I mean, yo, this was beautiful. We can carry on. I mean, there's there's a whole idea is to take some nuggets from the chapter and go and do something about it, especially those of us who want to become mentors and, and, and coaches. Yeah, you know how much I love football. Uh, that's the next the next uh, 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 review next week. Uh, that is going to be chapter eight, and that is titled Inspired by Village Football. Let me emphasize that it's not just any other football. It's, uh, it's just chapter eight. It will be, uh, sorry, no, chapter seven. Apologies. <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> it just shows you how, how much I can't wait for that chapter. <laughs> it is actually chapter seven. Yeah, and that is also a very, very interesting chapter, and that is You Are Your Culture. And uh, that is going to be addressed by our reviewers, uh, Charles Leonard Mabuso and Ray Elijah Diteku, the ex-CEO of my organization, Institute of People Management. And it is on the 23rd of May, which is next week. I think this is one chapter that we are potentially going to, to definitely extend the show because, I mean, we are going to talk about our various cultures. Uh, and as I said, uh, these are also two seasoned HR professionals, the legends themselves, Leonard Mabuso and uh, Elijah Ritegu, who, by the way, is one of my peer mentors. I used to call him my mentor. Now I, I've graduated, uh, he says I'm his peer. <laughs> uh, so we, we're definitely looking forward to being with him uh, next week, Tuesday, same time, 1800 hours South Africa Standard Time. And if it comes to push, we will probably do the same and extend it depending on what comes. Up. But as you can imagine, you are your culture. Um, Many of us are going to be requested to really reflect deeply on what is our culture. Uh, are we aware of it? And the fact that it's not static. It's, it's indeed dynamic. George, uh, uh, from a coaching point of view, I'm sure you will agree with me that culture plays massive role in, in, in people's way of showing up. And I, I, I just want you, I know I had said, you said goodbyes, but just just one way, one 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 remark on that in preparing us for next week, and then I will close the show. 
right. Yeah, culture is massive. Uh, it's huge. It affects uh, the way we think, the way we behave, how we show up. It, it is our culture. And in fact, it extends to companies. Mm. Uh, there's a statement that says culture is a uh, strategy for breakfast. If you have heard that, what it basically means is your culture and the organization is 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 bad. You can have the most wonderful strategies, and nothing will ever happen. And so, mm. culture is such a huge thing for us as individuals, for organizations, and something that we need to keep our eye on uh, all the time. And culture is not history, George. No, <laughs> it's not. It will not say, well, "Let's go back and wear skins of." Animals and mm-hmm. animals. <laughs> it's dynamic. It's dynamic. Dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. My my seems to be wanting to say last remark and I'm gonna cut him short quickly, my <laughs> Yes, and and, and, and and the other thing is that you know, most people don't understand that uh culture is not something you are born with, it's something you are born into. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it means that adults have a responsibility of uh, um, inculcating culture into their own children. Thank you. Thank you so much. I could see you were planning to, to bring that in. And, and that is really setting the scene for next week. Please, listeners, don't miss that one. The two colleagues are really elders and seasoned HR professionals who have worked with organizations from a human resources point of view where culture was always central when you talk of diversity, management, inclusion, and all those stuff. So it's definitely going to filter into the boardroom, as, as George has said. Uh, so I, 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 I let me suspend the football one. Let me indulge on culture next week. Right? And, and, and yeah. I think it, it, is, it, is, it is a topic. It is a topic and a half. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, listeners, colleagues. Wow, what a beautiful name. This was Commercial Radio Worldwide, CRW, the mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. We inform and entertain. We develop and educate. We empower and support. We associate and network. That is the idea. And by the way, uh, if you want to revisit this discussion, you can go to commerzaradiopodcast.com. Commerzaradiopodcast.com. You will find all the previous uh, reviews and you will also find this one as we are going to put it into a podcast. And remember in future as well, that's where you can go and revisit and really workshop whoever you workshop on and make sure that these topics are are deepened. The purpose of having written the book is not for us just to read the book and end there. It's to read the book and take the lessons from it and and apply it to a real situation so that we can empower ourselves, capacitate people around us, and grow the continent, grow South Africa and the world. As professionals, as it was said earlier on, we have a responsibility to transfer the knowledge to the little ones. That's what our parents did to eat, and that's what we must do. Take care, be good. Until next week, Tuesday, goodbye.